Does it still make sense to buy a used car? And 10 used car buyer mistakes coming up at the end. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, a longtime car buyer's advocate known as the homework guy, and I'm joined today by the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Does everyone who needs a car want a brand new car? Well, perhaps, but can everyone afford a brand new car? Obviously not, or there wouldn't be much of a used car market out there. And here's another thing. The used car market is way bigger than the new car market. Yes. Not in terms of dollars, but in terms of the number of sales. In 2015, for example, 38.3 million used cars were sold as opposed to 17.4 million new cars, which makes the used car market more than twice the size of the new car market. Part of why buying used cars is so popular is the depreciation factor. When you purchase a brand new car for, let's say, $20,000, the moment you drive it off the lot, it depreciates up to 20% on average, which means it's now only worth $16,000. That also means your car is now worth less than what you still owe on your car loan if you didn't put enough cash down, assuming you financed it. Right. It continues to depreciate more over the course of the first year of the ownership, usually by another 15%, which means after 12 months, the car is worth only 13,600. And you still have a problem with negative equity since you've only made a dozen payments on the loan. And then the car continues to depreciate by anywhere from 15 to 25 percent a year for another four years until it hits about five years which means it's pretty common for a new car to be worth less than 40 percent of what you paid for that new after owning it for just five years that is why in most car markets buying a nearly new or slightly used car can make a lot of sense you let the person who bought the brand new car take the biggest hit on depreciation for the first few years giving you a nearly new car at a much lower price Yes, you get to enjoy a number of other benefits, such as the car being in good condition, still retaining some of the original warranty, better financing rates from the bank, and so on. Some of the biggest challenges you face when shopping for a used car include the following, knowing how to start, deciding where to shop, identifying reputable dealers, understanding used car prices, identifying good deals, and figuring out financing. The Car Buyer's Guide we have on our website helps to tackle these and many other challenges head on with insider tips and strategies so you can be successful when shopping for a used car. In today's market, if you're going to shop used, a big part of being successful with your shopping is getting in the right frame of mind. But begin by ensuring that you avoid making what we've seen to be the following 10 mistakes most often made by used car buyers. Go ahead, Liz. Number one, not knowing what you can afford. Take the time to sit down and really take a realistic look at your financial situation. How much can you put towards a down payment? What would be a comfortable monthly payment? What's your credit score like? This is all information that you need to know before you even start going on car lots. Don't make the mistake of falling in love with a car only to realize later that you just can't afford it. Number two is not knowing what you want. There's a tricky balance you need to find between narrowing down the options so you aren't overwhelmed and being so specific that you can't find what you want. Think about what kind of vehicle that will meet your needs and come up with a short list of possibilities that will work for you. Number three, failing to check a dealer's reputation. There are lots of car dealerships out there and nearly all of them carry used cars. Do yourself a favor and check the reputations of dealers in your area. As a general rule, we recommend using Google reviews. They are harder to fake than some of the other sites. For example, Dealer Raider is a subscription service bought and paid for by dealers. And while they say it's fair and balanced, we've been treated to other sources using that same phrase and they were neither fair nor balanced. The bottom line is don't waste your time going to dealerships with consistently poor reviews or very few reviews. Number four, letting your heart rule your head. <laughs> Try to be rational, logical, and thorough in your search for a used car. If you don't take emotion out of the used car buying process, you might end up with a car that you love, but that doesn't meet your needs so well. Number five, indecision. When you come across that sweet deal on a vehicle that would be perfect for you, jump on it. There are plenty of other buyers also looking for a sweet deal on a car. And if you walk away from it because you might want to think about it a little too long, the car might be gone by the time you decide. Number six, failing to do your homework. Of course, we'd say that, right? Right. Or we wouldn't be the Homework Guy channel. You need to have some idea what fair prices are for what you think you want or need. Spend some time getting familiar with prices for the kinds of cars you want by using sites like Kelly Blue Book, NADA Guides, and Edmunds. They all do a great job of giving a range of what people are paying in your area. Number seven is not test driving a car. Who would actually buy a car without test driving it? Believe it or not, it happens all the time, so don't do it. Get in the car and drive it. It will tell you a lot about whether or not it's the right vehicle for you. I actually had a customer who bought a vehicle from me back when I was selling cars who didn't test drive it. And then he came and drove the car the day he bought it, which was a minivan. And he goes to drive out of the lot with it. And he's like, 
I had no idea this vehicle had a four-cylinder engine. Oh, my gosh, right? Yeah, amazing. Number eight, being a perfectionist, everyone shopping for a used car wants to get an amazing deal on an immaculately maintained vehicle with low mileage with a full set of service records. Just keep in mind that a used car will probably not be perfect. Number nine, only buying private sale by owner cars. Some people are adamant about only looking at cars for private sale by an owner, and we also suggest looking at the private car market, but private car sales does eliminate a lot of your possibilities. In fact, you're missing out on most of the used cars for sale because dealerships have the lion's share of available inventory. That's right, and number 10, Failing to ask for a vehicle report, don't ever do this, folks. Yeah. Vehicle reports are an essential part of the used car shopping process. They contain valuable information about a car, including whether or not it had been in a major accident, has flood damage, or carries a salvage title. A quality used car dealership should make these available for you for free, but be prepared to order one for yourself if you need to. These 10 mistakes are the ones we've seen people make over and over again by avoiding them from the start you'll have a much better chance at a great used car shopping experience. And that's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Also, a brief update on our hassle-free car buying process. As we've been saying, we're actively identifying and recruiting good dealers, not perfect ones, to connect our viewers with, but we can say that finding good dealers does take a lot of time, maybe even more time than the founders of this new hassle-free car buying process thought it would be, so please be patient. It's a difficult sorting and vetting process, but we're doing the work for you. We'll have a lot more on that very soon. If you appreciated today's show and you're new here, don't forget to smack that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of new shows. For those of you just entering the car market, you should be aware of all the free resources we have for you on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. And there is a ton free there, friends. You'll find a free car buyer's guide and free email templates to use with car dealers. There's also a list of fake fees and the FTC rules printout. We recently added the spreadsheet we did on total car dealer fees by state in the U.S., and there's a download for combating forced add-ons and deceptive pricing. It's all there for you on thehomeworkguy.com, free for you to download and use for car shopping. As Liz reminded you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Subscribing is free and painless to you, but it sure helps us out a lot. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we did here for you today. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And if you have just recently subscribed here on our channel, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subs out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.